Hello everyone, in today's beginner tutorial I'm going to go over basic navigation and hotkeys inside of Blender. Let's get started. To start off I'm going to create a new mesh. So to do that I'll need to press the shift key and the A key and that will bring up this add menu. Then I'll hover my mouse over this mesh and then I'll select the cube by pressing left click. As you can see I have created this cube. If I want to move my cube I can press G with the cube selected. So to select my cube I can just left click it and then by pressing G I can move it around. As you can see in Blender, there are these red, green and blue lines. These represent the axes in Blender. The blue one represents the Z axis, which is essentially up and down. Red axis, which in this case is left and right, is called the X axis. The Y axis is almost like a back and forth in this case, and that's the green. Now, if I want to move my object but only in one axis, I can press the G key and then the Y key. That will lock my object to only the Y axis. Which is back and forth. Same applies if I want to move it across the x-axis, red line will appear on the z-axis. Now as you can see this object is pretty small. To fix that we're going to use the scale tool. So with my object selected I will press S and as you can see I can make my object bigger or smaller. To save the position my object is in I will press left click and if I scale it too much and I don't like that I can press right click to undo. The same applies when I move my object can press left click to save it, Control c to undo, or I can press G and then X, and if I don't like how I've moved it, I can press right click to restore it to where it was. I'm going to scale my object up a wee bit more. Now, if I want to rotate my object, with my object selected by pressing left click on the object, I can now press the R key, and this will enable rotation mode. If I want to rotate it across a particular axis, for example the X axis, after I've selected R, I can then press X, and now as you can see it's rotating across the x-axis like this. Same applies if I want to rotate across the y-axis I'll just press Y in rotation mode and Z. Now if I want to move, scale or rotate my object on two axes at the same time for example let's say I want to scale my object on the x and the y-axis but not the z-axis. To do that I would press S to enter scale mode and then shift and then Z. And as you can see, by pressing Shift Z, it's now excluding the Z axis. And so when I scale my object, it doesn't scale up and down at all. Same applies if I press Shift Y. Now it will only scale on the Z and the X axis. Of course, this also applies to using the grab tool. So if I press G and then Shift Z, it will move in every direction but the Z axis. You can do the same with rotation. Press R to enter rotation mode. And then I can press Shift X. Now it'll only rotate on the Y and Z axis. If I move my object, left click to save the position, and then I press Alt G, you can see my cube is now returned to where it was before. This will happen no matter how much I move my object, as many times as I like, and even if I saved the file and closed it, Alt G would still work. Same applies if I scale my object up, although this object's been scaled already, and then press Alt S, it's going to return to that little small cube we had from the start. To scale it back up again. The same also applies with rotation. So if I rotate my object, then I press Alt and R. Let's say I rotate my object, scale it up, move it over here, and I want this to be the new default for my object. To make this the default, I'll need to apply the transforms. So to do that, I'll hold down Control and then A. And first of all, I will apply a location. Now you'll notice if I move my object, and then press Alt G, it will return to this original position here. If I now press Control A and then apply the location, the left click, and now I rotate the object and then press Alt R, it will return to this state. And of course, if I press Control A and then select scale with left click, and then scale my object, and then press Alt S, it will return to when I set the scale. Now, as you can see, when I'm scaling my object or rotating it, it's not rotating it from the center of the object. Now if I want to fix that, I'm going to need to set the object back to the middle of this geometry. So to do that, with the object selected by pressing left click, I will now press right click, come down to this panel called set origin by hovering my mouse over it, and select origin to geometry with left click. Now when I rotate my object again, it will be back to the center. The reason that origin changed was because I applied my transforms. Now I'm going to scale my object down so it's easier to see. And now I'm going to show you how to duplicate an object. There are two ways to do this and they serve different functions. The first way is by pressing shift and then D. 
this will duplicate the object. Now I'll press G and X, so it's got the same Y and Z axis. And now what I'm going to do is with this object selected, I'm going to press Alt D, which is another way to duplicate an object. However, when you duplicate an object using Alt D, it shares the object data with the object you duplicated. Allow me to demonstrate. Now with one of these objects selected, I will press Tab and enter Edit Mode. As you can see, when I entered Edit Mode, this object that I duplicated from also entered Edit Mode. Now if I select the vertice with left click, then press G and Z. When I move this vertice down, so does this one. Press Ctrl Z to undo that. Now on the other hand, if I select this one, which was the first cube I made, and press Tab to enter Edit Mode, and move this, you notice this object which I duplicated from this one will not change because they're not sharing object data. These two objects are sharing object data, so when I edit one of them, the other one also edits. This also applies when I use materials. If I put one material on this one, this material will change with it. Great! Now I'll show you how to select multiple objects. So to do that, I'll left click my first one, then I'll press shift, and then left click. Left click again. Make sure you hold down shift for this. Then I will press X, and that will delete all my objects. Brilliant! Let's go over the basic navigation then. So first of all, this thing here controls how we rotate around the scene. So I left click the circle and drag my mouse, you can see I can rotate. Another way I can rotate is using the middle mouse button on my mouse. If like me, you don't have a middle mouse button, you can left click this edit, preferences. And if you come to input, you can emulate the free button mouse. This will be off by default. So I'll turn it on and now when I press alt, hold down alt and then left click, it now emulates that rotation with a middle mouse button. This can be useful for many different things, depending on what you're doing in Blender. Next up, we have this zoom icon. And now when I left click and drag, I can zoom in and out of the scene. This button of the hand allows us to pan the view. Next up, we have this camera symbol, which allows us to view our camera. As you see, when I left click it, nothing happens because there isn't a camera in our scene. To fix that, I'm gonna press Shift A, and rather than mesh, I'm gonna come down to camera and select camera. Now with this zoom tool, I'm going to zoom in so I can see my camera. And as you can see, if I rotate it about, and I can even scale it using the tools we've been using before, I have this camera. Your one will probably be a rectangle shape. The reason my one's a square is because I like to render my images as squares for using on Instagram. If you want to change your camera to a square shape, come over to this dimensions tab under this output properties panel here and change the resolution from 1920, 1080 to 1920, 1920. Now, if I want to view my camera, I can either left click this button or press numpad zero on my numpad. I don't have a numpad, so I'm going to left click this button here. And now I can see my camera. If I want to move my camera, I can, with the camera selected using left click, I can use my G and Z and X and Y to move them across different axes and I can use the rotate and I can use the scale. However, if I try to rotate my view like this or by using the middle mouse button, you see I come out of my camera view. If when I rotate around the scene, I want the camera to follow me like a first person, I need to come down to this view panel in this toolbar here. If you don't see this toolbar, just press the N key on the keyboard. Now under view lock, this will be might be closed by default. Open it up and turn this camera to view on. Now when I rotate my scene, even if my camera isn't selected, my camera will follow my view and I can position it how I wish. When I am happy with it, I can stop rotating, turn off camera to view, I can simply move this to get out of that view, or I can press this camera button again. Finally, this button changes us from perspective to orthographic. This is the orthographic view, which may be useful if you're doing CAD. But I'm going to change it back to perspective view, because that's what I like to work with. And that about wraps up everything you need to know. I hope this simple beginner tutorial was useful. And if you want to see more tutorials, make sure to check out my beginner tutorial playlist. And there'll be more videos in the future. So make sure to subscribe if this sort of thing interests you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.